Hey guys, Perth's Education here and welcome back to the Unreal Engine 4 beginning tutorial series and in today's episode we're going to be taking a look at destructible meshes inside of Unreal Engine 4. So this is essentially going to allow us to take an ordinary static mesh, in this case I've got this basic cube here, I've converted it into a destructible mesh and then I'm going to be breaking it into a whole bunch of different pieces and that's going to be randomly generated by the engine. Uh, we're also going to be adding a few extra things. Uh, we're going to be adding in sound effects, particle effects. So I'm just going to quickly dive into the viewport, into the game here real quick, and I'm going to show you exactly what we're going to be creating today. So if you take a quick look here, you, you see I've got this little sandstone rock here. But when I run into it or jump into it, uh, you're going to see it's going to break apart. You hear the little sound effect in the background, and you had the explosion particle effect. And all of these little pieces, they all have collision. They all have uh, meshes, uh, sorry, materials on the inside, um, and you know. Unreal Engine 4 does a really great job of, you know, taking these hollow objects, turn them into like proper 3D and uh, creating all these different little chunks. So without further ado, let's just go ahead and uh, get started. So as soon as my engine stops being laggy, I can do that for you. So today we're just going to be working with a basic rock um, that I've got here. Now I want you all to keep in mind that you can do this with pretty much any object that you have. Um, there is a few rules pretty much. Um, First and foremost, you need to make sure it is uh, a whole object, there's no sides missing. Um, you know, sometimes you have, if part of an object is not going to be seen by the player, you might get rid of the back faces and all of that. Um, that's not going to work with destructible meshes, it all needs to be there. And also, you need to have collision. This object doesn't have collision at the moment, so what I'm going to do here is just add uh, some basic collision. Just go to collision then add simplified collision. There's a few other ways of doing it. You can do auto convex collision if you want to be all fancy, but this should do for now. So now I've got my object in the content browser. Uh, just find it wherever it is, whatever you're trying to work with. Right click it and then go to create destructible mesh. And once you've done that, you should uh, have the destructible mesh editor open here now. And we can see our object in the little viewport here. Uh, it may be a little slow before you get all your materials and stuff it's going to be compiling the shaders don't worry about that so let's just give you a quick overview so first things first go over to destructible settings and there's a few things we want to do first so first things first enable impact damage that way it can actually uh be destroyed you can you know trigger the exposure uh the explosion so next thing is the number of uh, chunks that you're going to have in this. So I'm going to set this to 15 for now and that's over at cell site count. And if I go ahead and press fracture mesh in the top left hand corner, with 15 you can see it's now going to break up into all these different parts. And if I go back a bit and then go over to explode amount, I can pretty much get a time lapse view of how that explosion is going to work. Um, and that's quite cool actually. Um, and if we wanted to, we can just keep changing that to higher amounts if we want to, if the chunks are too big, um, and so on. And we can turn it down if we want them to be bigger, but yeah. Um, we've also got something down here called random seed. Um, so instead of being the, the chunks being completely random, uh, you can do the same. Uh, so you can use the seed, like if I use the seed 15, press fractured mesh, and then if I use the same seed again, it's going to be exactly the same. If I go to 14, it's going to be different. Um, and if you're working with multiple destructible meshes, um, using the same mesh, you might want to just keep the same seed for whatever reason. Uh, that's completely up to you. So let me just go ahead and uh, save this. I'm just going to use the random seed, and I'm going to have 25 chunks for now. Uh, so if I save it, and then drag it into my scene, uh, I'm going to delete this old one, and I'm going to drag in the new one, and I'm just going to chuck it straight there, press play. I don't need to build lighting as it's completely dynamic. And if I jump into it, you're going to see it's going to fall into a whole bunch of different pizzas here. Uh, sorry, did I say pizzas? Um, pizzas. Um, but there is one slight problem. Um, it does look good, but the inside has the world grid material on it, and it doesn't look really realistic. So what we need to do now is just uh, set up the material for the inside chunks. But other than that, it, wo it works absolutely great. They've all got collision. You can walk into them. You can chuck them around and do all of that good stuff. So to add materials, just go ahead and open it up and scroll down. And when it gets to uh, skeletal mesh, you've got the materials one and two. 
So first things first, you got the number one, which is the outside, and then sorry, you got zero, which is the outside, and then you got one, which is the inside. So what I'm gonna do here is just pretty much use the same material, m underscore rock, uh, as soon as I can find it. Uh, so what I'm gonna do here is just find that one, and then just drag it in just like that. Now if I press save, close it out, and then jump into it again. Sorry, wrong one. Uh, you should see it's now going to be all rocky inside, it looks realistic. And the last bit that we want to do today is go over uh, the particle system, the little explosion effect that you just saw in the little sandstone rock. So let's just go ahead and do that. So open up the Destructible Mesh once again, find it in your content browser. And if we go down, and if we go to effects, you can see we've got particle systems and sounds. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to load in a explosion effect. So just click it, click this bit, the drop down, type in explosion, and boom. And I'm going to chuck the sound in there, and that's also explosion. Now you can use whatever sounds you want to. Um, obviously for different destructions, you're going to have different sounds. You're not really going to have this type of explosion for a rock. You might just have some like rock, crumb rock crumbling sounds. Um, I don't know, but that is entirely up to you. Um, but you're free to play around with it, so I'm just going to chuck that in here once again, explosion 1, save, and then if I go ahead and press play, and jump into it, you can hear the sound, you saw the explosion, the light, and all of that good stuff, and we got all of our rocks in our scene here, and we can, wow, that was amazing, and we can, you know, collide with them and do all of that good stuff. Anyway, that's pretty much everything for today's episode, play around with destructible meshes, they are absolutely brilliant. Uh, thanks for watching, comment, like, and subscribe, and I will see you in the next episode. Goodbye.